Hi, and welcome to Diabetic 365. And today we have a very special guest. Uh, we have Rishi Shah. He is the founder of Context Media, um, who is playing in the field of uh, diabetes and also other different um, healthcare networks. And uh, he is now uh, providing point of care for the diabetes patients throughout the um, endocrinologist office throughout the uh, country. So, uh, hey, Shah, how are you? How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Doing well. Happy to be with you. So, uh, first question is, uh, tell us about your context media in the diabetes uh, space. Sure. So, um, we started about five years ago um, with the simple premise of trying to make office visits for people with diabetes uh, better through providing information to them uh, in the waiting room immediately before their visit with the physician. And we do this through videos about nutrition, uh, videos about uh, health, videos about fitness, uh, and we help these patients uh, learn about their disease and, and how to have a better conversation with their doctor. Um, and they watch them for about half an hour, uh, and then they go talk to their doctor. Okay. So how are you trying to bridge this gap between the patient and the doctor? Well, that's exactly right. You know, oftentimes the patient will go into the doctor's office and, you know, he'll be worried or she'll be worried. Um, they know that the blood results aren't going to be great. They know that the doctor's going to have to tell them to lose weight and be healthier. Uh, and sure enough, they go into the office. They hear these things for a couple minutes. Um, and the same thing happens again three months later. And there is sometimes a lack of a, 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 a fruitful communication uh, in that office visit. So the way we try to bridge that gap is, is um, by, by helping the patient understand, okay, if you do need to lose weight, if you do need to do carb counting, here's how to do it. So for half an hour before the office visit, while you wait, um, you know, let us show you 10 recipes. And now when your doctor shows you that your blood results are out of whack, that your A1C is too high, that you need to do these things, you actually leave with ideas about how to do them. And you go home inspired to eat differently. You go home inspired to know that, hey, you know, just a 30-minute walk uh, uh, five times a week can make such a big difference. So oftentimes the physicians are delivering the right messages. The patients want to be healthier but they don't know how. That's the gap. How do we do it? Uh, uh, and you need to hear that from people who are like you, not just doctors. Mm -hmm. And that's why this programming works so well in doctor's offices. Um, patients learn from people like them. They learn from uh, people with diabetes how to live healthier. And they go into that exam room uh, just, just full of ideas and, and, and energy uh, when they really are, are receptive to the programming. I can't tell you how many letters we get uh, uh, um, telling us you know, boy, seeing this program just changed my life. I, I, I just thought I'd rather live a shorter life but be happier than, you know, change what I eat. And now I know that I can be healthy and happy. And um, that's the goal of the program. So uh, you've talked about point of care is reaping a huge ROI than other, other kind of methods. So uh, what is that gap that, that you're bridging in the point of care networks which is lacking from the other, um, uh, other methods? You know, I think all of the media is important. Um, certainly there are going to be moments where you're cuddled up on your bed maybe or in your living room or in your kitchen uh, table and you want content. Uh, so all of the, these media outlets I think are important. But one thing that point of care does right is timing. Uh, there is no better time to inform and educate a patient than when she or he is most engaged in their health uh, at their doctor's office. Exactly. Um, now, of course, it's the, the time between the office visits that really makes a patient healthy. But if you look at when the patient is most engaged in learning about health, uh, when they're really thinking about it and, and thinking, boy, I better, uh, 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 I better spend the next three months differently than I just spent the last three months so the blood tests are different next time, that moment is in the office. And, and we found consistently that, um, you know, it's timing. They're very open to this information. They want to make changes. And we can also measure them. We know uh, uh, through looking at prescription data, uh, uh, you know, anonymously for the offices that uh, we are increasing compliance. We are increasing uh, 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 persistency and adherence. Uh, we're really making an impact there. So we know it's working. We're able to measure it. Um, we certainly can survey the patients and do longitudinal studies, which we've done, um, and we know that patients are making a change uh, because we're reaching them at the right time. Mm -hmm. 
So, what are the challenges? And of course, when you have a challenge, you'll have an opportunity. So, what are the challenges that you're facing while building this um, patient-centric information or marketing um, plans? Yeah, well, that's a great question. You know, um, when you talk about doing what's patient-centric, right? Um, the premise is you do what's right for the patient, not for you. So, as a media company, it would be very easy for us to throw all this information on a website. Uh, it would be very easy for us to do that. Uh, but that's not where the patients need it. The patients need it in the context of their own care. They need to know that their doctors have approved this content. They have selected this content for them. Um, and it's really the right messages for them. So that requires a partnership network with uh, physician offices, outpatient waiting areas of major hospitals uh, in every state in the, in the country. And that's the challenge here. Uh, the U.S. healthcare industry is very fragmented. You've got you know thousands of these endocrinologists, and then uh, thousands and thousands more diabetes educators, and then of course some primary care doctors, all of whom uh, treat diabetes. So in the last five years, we've built a network in all 50 states um, with endocrinologists, diabetes educators, and primary care physicians, where we are installing this media uh, as part of the patient visit so the patients will see it immediately before their care. Uh, now that requires a couple of things that are very challenging. Uh, one, you've got to acquire these relationships. Mm -hmm. So we've had to build thousands of relationships with these doctors' offices and hospitals. Um, two, uh, you've got to, to really play the right content for the right office. So if you have a Native American reservation, um, you, or you've got a Spanish-speaking office, uh, you need different content than you would in a more traditional uh, 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 office with an English-speaking Caucasian population. And so the recipes have to be different, the content has to be different, uh, uh, you've got to be specific. And those are the challenges, but we're meeting them head-on. Okay, that's very good. So I did see you speaking about the social media, how it's changing the whole space, uh, how we shop, um, how we network, how we, you know, um, tweet out to the friends. So. In related to this diabetes or in the healthcare, how is social media going to change the whole pattern of the healthcare system in the next decade? You know, I think social will make it more natural, right? So when you are sick, when you're diagnosed with something, of course you talk to your doctor and that's important. Uh, of course you independently evaluate the information that's presented to you. But one of the first things we all do as human beings is we talk to our family, we talk to our friends, we talk to our loved ones. Um, and that's a very natural thing. People have been doing that since, you know, the beginning of time. And the fact that social media now exists in the form of Facebook and Twitter and, and a lot of the other social networks that are out there uh, is, is, is great because we can now watch those things, we can observe them, uh, we can even sometimes participate in them. But I don't really view it as a fundamental shift. Uh, uh, I think people, you know, I think a lot of these decisions have been social. Um, and, and we're giving art to them now as media companies. So for us, you know, one of the most important human relationships, you know, you have is with your doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not call it social, but it's a, it's a very important relationship, especially for people with chronic disease. Um, it becomes a personal relationship. You've got to trust them. You've got to get to know them. Uh, and we really help build that. You know, you will see by walking into the offices that we're in, information about the doctor, whether it was uh, where they went to school, where their education is from, what studies they've published, uh, what their hobbies are, uh, things that allow you to get to know your doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and we're building out a suite of products in the mobile and web space that allow you to do some of those things as well. So we don't see ourselves becoming a social media company in the way of a, of a Facebook or Twitter. Um, I personally am somewhat skeptical that people are going to use different social networks for their health than they use uh, 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 for other activities. It would sort of be like having a different set of friends to discuss, you know, your health with than exactly. uh, your other friends. So I think, you know, Facebook and Twitter and the other things will continue to to be where conversations are are, are taking place online. Um, and our place is really to solidify the relationship with, with the doctor and the patient. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know that you're working a lot on the patient end of the spectrum. So what about on the doctor's side? Are you trying to uh, you know, equip doctor with more amount of information or anything like 
if the doctor is above 50 or 60 years trying to educate him, him how social media is going to play a big role and how he should come into Twitter or whatever social networks so that it makes comfortable for a patient, for his patient to, uh, you know, discuss something between the doctor's visit and, um, you know, since the doctor's visit are once in three or four months, it makes the patient more comfortable uh, when he has any question, just tweet it out or send some message through his social networks and get immediate information. So are you trying to help uh, the patient in this way from the doctor's end too? You know, Vijay, that's a terrific point. It really is. We've thought a lot about it, um, and we've got some things that we're excited to launch in the next year that will allow uh, more interaction between the patient and the doctor uh, outside uh, the office, right, in between the office visits. Exactly. But nobody can deny that, especially in this country, we've got some challenges uh, to do that uh, because of the, the reimbursement structure, uh, and because of uh, the regulations. So physicians are very concerned about interacting with patients uh, outside of the established mechanisms mm -hmm. to handle this communication. Uh, they're concerned about, you know, liability, right? They're concerned about uh, uh, being reimbursed. Uh, they're concerned about a lot of things. But there's no doubt to us that, um, you know, as we move forward, that communication will occur outside of the office. And as the physician's educational partner, uh, we view our, our, our role as central to that. And we're working on ways to help physicians to continue educating and interacting with their patients outside of that office visit. That's very good. So here, here's your last question. We know that en there are, uh, endos are less in number and diabetic educators are less in number to the amount of uh, patients that are growing. I think one in three is going to be diabetic by 2025, at least for the statistics. That's right. At least for the statistics, uh, that's what it's showing. So something, uh, 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 context media, something like yours is going to be a huge trust factor for the patients. So this means a huge challenge and also a huge responsibility on your shoulders. So what's your message to the diabetic community out there as a CEO of Context Media? You know, Vijay, um, it's something we think a lot about. Um, there's no doubt that uh, with the increased number of people coming into the health system and, and frankly, the rapid growth of a disease like diabetes, uh, we have a lot of work on our hands to educate this uh, uh, ever-increasing patient population. Now, the good news is uh, we've got technology as wind at our back. The uh, uh, patients are far more comfortable using technology now than they were even a few years ago. Um, I think mobile has played a huge role in that, uh, even with the older patient populations. And um, if you look at the challenge in a disease like diabetes, I don't think it's in the medicine. I think it's in the lifestyle. So we know how to treat it. Now we've got to make sure that we help patients uh, live in accordance to the way we know they've got to, to make some of these lifestyle changes. So every morning, for example, if you sign up, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll plug it a little bit, if you sign up for our nutrition tip of the day uh -huh. by you know text messaging a certain uh, a short code to a keyword, uh, you can get a tip that will remind you about how to eat healthier. Now, you may not be able to apply that tip uh, that day, but it starts your day with a thought about how do I eat healthier. Uh, you can sign up and do medication reminders. You can uh, do a whole suite of things. Mm -hmm. And those are the sorts of things we need to do to manage a disease like diabetes as a country and as a health system. Um, there just aren't enough specialists out there to see a diabetes, di diabetes patient every day or every week or every month. And that isn't even what's going to produce the change we need. Uh, we've really got to leverage technology in the form of patient re reminders, uh, patient rewards, to, to really get the incentives right and help people live healthier. Um, the good news in all this is we know how to do it. This isn't a disease where we don't have a way to manage it. The medicine is there, the science is there. Now we've just got to communicate it with patients and use technology to harness the power uh, of that lifestyle change. Thank you, Rishi, for being on the show and sharing your thoughts on uh, diabetic spectrum of your context media. And you have a nice day. And I wish you all the best with your context media. Terrific. Thank Thanks for having me, and I hope to be back soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Rishi. You have a nice day.